Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. Uh, I have a client today um, who attended with bilateral, fully occluding, very dry earwax, dry and hard earwax, and we're just in the right ear first. And what I'm going to do for this video, I'm going to just talk a bit more about depth perception, uh, and in particular with depth perception with an endoscope. And so I'll just kind of give you an overview of the video. I'm just going to be removing large chunks of earwax uh, from both ears. Uh, in this right ear, I'm also going to be using an ear hook, and you'll see that in a moment. I'm going to insert it just over the top of the wax, um, getting behind to extract it. And that's because this wax, it's I can feel whilst I'm suctioning it, there's something holding it back further in the ear. Um, and that's because this wax was extending all the way to the eardrum. And in both ears, um, at the end of the procedure, you'll see there's wax on both of the eardrums. And that's where you need depth perception to remove the wax. And I was on LinkedIn today and someone, uh, I expect better, them if, better of them if I'm honest, um, they promote a different type of visualisation technique. Um, it's, a, it's an Australian device, I believe. And it's similar to a, a microscope. So with a microscope, um, you have what we call binocular or stereoscopic vision, and that's whereby you're using both eyes in conjunction to judge the depth of an object, so in case of the ear, earwax, that's particularly deep in the ear, near the eardrum. In order to have um, binocular and stereoscopic depth perception, both eyes need to be able to see the object. Now in the ear that's quite difficult because the ear canal is quite narrow so it's virtually neon impossible unless someone's got a huge ear canal that both eyes are able to look inside someone's ear canal at, at the wax that's deep in the ear. So what a microscope does, it's very clever, it artificially converges your eyes together so you're looking through um, Obviously, if you think about a periscope and a submarine, you've got eyepieces on both sides. And then artificially, the optics of the microscope, it artificially brings it, your eyes together. So it converges your, we call it the interpupillary distance. So uh, the interpupillary distance is the, the, the distance between um, your, both your eye sockets and your pupils, both eyes, basically. And it artificially brings that together, it narrows it. So you're looking at the object inside the ear using um, both eyes. Now, about a decade ago, I believe, um, the use of head loops became quite common in earwax, at least in the UK, in the private sector. So head loops are slightly different to a microscope. You still, they, they are magnifying glasses, basically. You've got um, magnifying, imagine goggles, both eyes that magnify the object, but they don't converge the interpupillary distance. So, in the case of, it, uh, of the ear, unless the patient's ear canal is very wide and the wax is very lateral, so near the entrance, you would somewhat struggle for depth perception using traditional head loops because you just can't. See, the both eyes are not going to be able to see deep inside the ear um, in order to judge perception, depth perception. And you can try this at home, guys. So, if you're looking at an object in front of you, um, and if you close one eye and try and touch the tip of the object, so it probably needs to be 30 or 40 centimetres away with the tip of your finger, you'll see, you, you probably will manage, but it's much easier with both eyes, you have that depth perception. So, there's, there's, there was someone that made a comment today that, uh, indirectly inferring that the technique they use, they use these portable microscopes that uh, converge your interpretive eye distance. And then they're insinuating that an endoscope basically doesn't. And they later denied it and trying to, trying to be a bit funny and trying to make a mockery of it all about their comment. But I think it's important. We don't want to be giving false, misguided, infactual information, um, not only to fellow professionals, but to the public. Um, so with an endoscope, you're not using binocular vision in some respects because both eyes are not looking inside the ear canal. Instead, you're viewing... Um, the monitor of an iPod. Um, however, you, you can get depth perception using monocular uh, cues. So monocular is using one eye, uh, which is in a sense what we're doing. We're looking, both eyes are looking at a screen, but technically that's just one eye. 
And you do that through different processes. You do that through shadows in the ear canal, landmarks in the ear canal, or basically just putting the endoscope further in the ear. The further in you go in the ear with the endoscope, you can judge the distance better. And when you know the ear anatomy, the shadows, the different bends and twists of the ear, um, and also something called motion parallax, I believe it's called. So just by moving the endoscope forwards and backwards, you can judge the distance by the speed and knowing the, the, the length of the ear canal. So to go a bit f into physics there, but as I showed you in both of those procedures, it's very, um, I'm able to get depth perception with an endoscope. Now it does take a bit of skill, a bit of practice, but it's, it's possible. And I've removed wax some off the eardrum on both ears. And if you watch my YouTube channel, I'm doing this regularly. I'm moving wax directly off the eardrum, peeling skin. And it's not just me. Um, you've got people like Reese Barber, who's also been trained by Clear Wax and ourselves and uses the eye clear scope, Connor Balland, Durham Hearing. So if you don't know who these guys are, I'm sure you probably do go and subscribe to the channel. You, uh, you can you can watch um, both, uh, both of these and others uh, perform quite complex endoscopic earwax removal procedures using depth perception. And if we weren't able to use depth perception, we, we wouldn't be able to um, remove stuff directly off the eardrum and uh, delicately peel things off the ear canal. And most importantly, if you can't get depth perception with an endoscope, then why are e ENT surgeons performing endoscopic ear surgery? Well, why, why are they? Uh, isn't it dangerous if they, if they can't judge depth? So the moral of the story, um, it's just been a bit annoying. I just expected better of this individual and they're trying to promote their own device, which is fine, but speak uh, positively about your own device. Um, try not to criticize other people's device when it's wrong um, to promote your own. Speak about your own strengths, not others' false weaknesses. So I just wanted to um, highlight that, but guys, because things like this, misinformation, it, it can deter people from getting the correct treatment or professionals getting trained in, uh, in appropriate ear care. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Sorry, I hope it didn't come across as a rant. I just wanted to, as I said, set the record straight. I think it's important. And um, part of the reason why I do these videos is to, oh, well, I kind of enjoy doing it. So it's kind of, uh, I, I kind of find it, it's nice. I upload videos and it, I, it educates uh, people. And that's initially why I first uploaded my first video many, many years ago was to show the public uh, what to expect when they have their ears clean when they come to my clinic. Never in a million years did I think it would um, take off like it is, and um, and not just myself. As I said, people like Reese Barber are doing fantastically well on, on social media, and um, Connor Ballon is another one to watch out for. Um, people like watching it for educational reasons, but also other reasons, um, quite which is um, apparent from some of the comments. So. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, just wanted to stick up for all of those people performing endoscopic de-waxing. Um, and yeah, some professionals, everyone has their own, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So some people might prefer using head loops even, although uh, I don't think they do provide that perception. And the thing is, I've used these other technologies, so I can speak in first hand. Um, or some people like using these portable microscopes, some people like using operating microscopes. So long as they're proficient in that technique, I don't see a problem. I prefer an endoscope because I value the benefits, which is the wide, unparalleled field of view, which is a fact. I mean, you cannot get the same view um, with any other visualization technique than you do with an endoscope. And this is what that chap was claiming that the optics of the view you get with his device is superior than any other portable device, which is just not, it's not true. It's not, it's absolutely false. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop there. Have a great weekend and I'll upload some new videos next week. Uh, take care. Uh, I appreciate you all watching and listening. Bye.